All right, this guy's on the way to the farm shop, utilizing our worker. So hopefully this is actually going to go the right way. Okay. Something tells me the AI needs a little bit of work. Okay. <laughs> All right, moving on. Hey guys, welcome back to AF Farms for another episode of Hot Bella Ron Start From Scratch. So carrying on from last video, we are currently underway with some harvesting contracts. So we're just working our way through those. Currently, we've got field 36 is due to be completed. And we've still got a bit to go, so let's get these guys underway on the remaining section. All right, this guy needs to be emptied. So I've just got to try and remember where each combine, so sorry, not combine, each trailer has to be delivered to and which sets of equipment are for which contract because that is a little bit confusing. This is the one we had issues with earlier. Yeah, still got issues with that spout or the pipe. Oh, I don't know what we're going to do here, eh? Very unfortunate. Uh, let's see if we can dismiss the worker. Hopefully this will work. I mean it ain't pretty, but it's effective, so let's leave those guys alone for a moment. Uh, this guy needs to be emptied, which I believe this, this tractor is for that harvester, so let's go and empty that. Uh, whereabouts is this guy? So field 33 has got a little bit to go. All right, where is our... Okay, this is the one we're after. Now this should be for this field and this contract. Now that's not gonna, that's not gonna unload unless I get inside, which is painful. So hopefully that'll unload. Okay, this guy's also full, so I think they're in the same field. Yes, they are. All right, let's get this guy back underway. So we'll just have to work with that that issue with the vehicle. I mean, it is what it is, but we'll make it work. All right, this guy's empty. Let's get repositioned. Uh, what I might do actually is. No, I'm going to just stay here. I was thinking about taking this harvester up to one of the other fields. However, I'll just make use of it while it's here, just to save a bit of time. All right, let's go and unload our second combine, which is just up at the end of the field here. So not much left here to be honest. So what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to try and I think I will move that combine. So our owned com the one that we own, we'll utilise on a different field. So I'm just going to get this guy emptied, and then I'll go and figure out which uh, which field has got the most crop left, and then we'll go over there and start working on it with this one. So potentially this field. Oh, something tells me this header is not going to fit. Let's see if we can get it through anyway. Oh, that's not going to work. Let's see if we can go up and around. Let's try that. Now, not the uh, ideal way to transport a header, but... So far, so good. Right, we'll get this guy underway in this corner and then this will help to wrap up this field pretty quickly. All right, this guy's going to run into issues because the field is an odd shape. So what I'm going to do is I'll quickly do this uh, manually. So what I mean by that is I'll drive this myself just so we don't have issues with the worker not being able to navigate this weird angle. So I'll see you in a couple of minutes.
All right, another load ready for this contract. So this, uh, this, this one's filled up pretty quickly. So this might give us a full load here to take over to the grain mill. So we'll see how we go. All right, full load here. So I'm gonna go drop this off at the grain mill and then we'll come back and we'll empty out our other combine. Just the least one in the back of the field there. So I'll see you guys in a few minutes. All right, here we are at the grain mill. So this should be our second last load for this contract. So I reckon one more load after this and we should be pretty good so let's get this unloaded all right 56 percent transported for field 33 let's head on back over all right looks like we've got a bit of a traffic jam on field 33 so let's get the uh, new holland out the way and then we will yeah, let that guy go past. Uh, busy day on the farm. All right, get this unloaded. And then we go and check on our other vehicles. So this guy should... No, he still hasn't done this last little bit. We'll try that again. And that, that should be the end of this field. So I'll go and grab our tra trailer. Yeah, this is the big issue I find with uh, fields that have angles, particularly on console. The workers just struggle to navigate the requirements. I mean, I guess I guess they've got to have a bit of interest in their field design. They can't all be square, perfectly square and rectangular. But from a gameplay perspective, it just becomes, you know, really sort of frustrating. Particularly when you hire a worker with the expectation that they're going to be able to do the task that you've employed them for yet they end up getting stuck or off track or unable to execute okay so I'll double check where this, this is field, field 36 let's double check where this contract has got to go so field 36 has got to go to GCHB grain elevator which is all the way up the top of the map so Let's get this delivered. So I'm just going to drive this over. We'll drop it off and then we'll collect that contract. So I'll see you guys. Actually, what I'm going to do quickly is make sure this guy is actually on task. Okay, that was good. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to send this guy over on a worker. GHCB grain elevator. Uh, we'll get it to not loop and start job. Okay, so they're away. Okay, this guy needs emptying, so let's try and figure out how we're going to do this again. So I reckon if I come in at come come in at this angle and just try and there we go, that's got it. So it takes a little bit of finesse, but we can get there. All right, let's check in on this guy. So this guy's having issues with this field. You know what, I'm just going to send him this way. Alright, least combine's ready to go again. Not least owned combine is ready to empty again. So it's definitely uh, boosting our efficiency, which is good. Ooh, just overshot a little bit there. Okay, I'll let these guys do their thing. Now let's see if this guy can actually turn around. Alright, it's looking like it's going to be okay. All right, where's this guy got to go? 30, field 22. I can't even remember. Let's have a look. Uh, ledger, di ledger, or oh, the farm shop, let's call it. Which I think is, it's up around this way. All right, this guy's on the way to the farm shop, utilizing our worker. So hopefully this is actually going to go the right way. Okay. Something tells me the AI needs a little bit of work. Okay. <laughs> All right, moving on.
So I think the issue there was... Alright, I think the issue was there. I didn't start it on the road correctly. So let's go deliver to the farm shop and we'll get it to not loop. Actually, we'll get it to loop. So let's go start job. Now this guy should navigate over there nicely because we started it on the road. Okay, that guy's doing alright. This guy needs to go to the grain mill to unload. So let's go and do that. I'll see you guys over there. All right, here we are. Load number three. Watch out for the pole. Oh, that was close. Okay, I think we've still got one more load to get out of here, so... All right, 84%. So, almost there, actually. Nice sunroof. Alright, so I think the only bit we've got left is this little corner part there. And what I'm going to do is I'll jump in the... Oh, we're still on the way to the farm shop. Oh yeah, just down there. Alright, where are we? Let's get this guy underway. So I'll just scoop up this last section manually. Just to save myself some time. And the quicker we can collect on this contract, the quick, quicker we can move on to something else. So what I really want to get get a start on is potentially I want to do some grass work. So I want to do some grass fields near our main farm. So I want to get into. Okay, of course this guy's going to run into me. Didn't see that happening. Yeah, I want to get into silage. So. utilizing grass because the grass is basically plant at once and then it will regrow so we don't need to invest in a lot of uh, infrastructure to replant and harvest and the silage does fetch a pretty good pretty good price and we can also utilize that for some animals as well so if we want to go down the hay and grass route for cows for example which I don't think we will because I think we've got limited funds Grab our trailer, get these guys unloaded, okay nice work this guy's done, which should mean our canola harvest should be ready to collect so let's have a look, uh, field 36 so let's collect that, 8Gs, nice work, now the other thing I need to do is uh, repair that combine and header, desperate need repairs. Alright, we've got those two. This guy is still underway. And of course this guy got stuck. Ah, these workers, I tell ya. Come on. So the problem with these four-wheel steer trailers, because they have a larger turning circle than just a rigid axle, um, I guess open center you would call. It's supposed to make them more maneuverable and I guess in real life that is the case. However for the game it just increases that turning circle just a little bit too much and particularly for the AI workers they just can't seem to negotiate the turns. So basically rule of thumb is that the bigger the trailer and the bigger the tractor the more risk you have of running into issues with getting stuck, particularly with workers which is super annoying and generally what I do in my other playthroughs with larger equipment is I don't I do all the deliveries to the cell points myself for that reason so just something to consider if you're new to the game and like I said before I don't see a lot of people utilizing the workers to their full extent in their let's plays now I'm not sure because that's just you know people want to see the person playing do all the jobs 
but uh, I'm all about utilizing everything available for maximum productivity and efficiency. So having six workers on the go really does um, speed up the workflow quite a bit. And even with these contracts, like we've got three contracts on the go. So I'm sort of conducting the orchestra to a degree by jumping into each vehicle, checking in, making sure everything's working, doing what they should do. But I'm not actually doing the grassroots driving of the combine, uh, that type of thing. So it just depends on your personal play style, I guess, but that's just how I tend to tend to like to play. Because the name of the game for me is to make as much money as possible, usually. That's what sort of motivates me to play. All right, how are we going to undo it's going to be a bit of a, a bit of a struggle. Let's see. Here we go. Now, hopefully, because this is on a slope. Oh, look at that! That's the ticket. Because we're on a bit of an angle here, so the combine is higher. Ah, oh, that's why it wasn't working before. Because we were trying to pipe out up uphill. So we didn't have the height advantage. Ah, oh, that makes perfectly good sense now. Yeah, I was wondering why it didn't work. It worked fine previously, but we're on a flatter map. Or flatter section of the map. Well, there you go. I feel like I'm learning something every, every time I play this at the moment. And I guess this is a good thing for me in these Let's Plays, because they sort of force me to play. Well, they don't force me, but encourage me to play uh, differently and even looking at this combine here so if we look at this that header to me looks like it's on a sloping angle so from the left of the screen to the right of the screen the header is sloping down which would make sense because we're compensating for the slope of the land which would of course impact our ability to unload there you go here I'm getting upset at the game when it's just operator error. Okay, let's go and unload this guy. So I'd be interested to hear what you guys think about, uh, you know, when you've had problems with the game, so you've learnt something or something surprised you or you thought the game was busted or broken or buggy, but it turned out it was just how you were playing it. I mean, I feel like I've come across those sorts of things all the time. But uh, yeah, it'd be interesting to hear what you guys have experienced so leave a comment below all right this should be the last load here and this is all work this will work out in our favor too so when we when we buy this uh, grain mill to produce flour all this contracted uh, oats and wheat and whatever what have you that we've harvested in the contracts will be available to us in the grain mill so that's a good leg up all right awesome so that is completed so let's go and collect on that one. So that's five grand just about. All right, this guy, let's return him back to the main farm. Get this guy all folded up, ready to go. Definitely in need of a bit of a wash too. So I might, might buy that handheld washer. It's a mod, I forget the name of it, but it's very, very handy for these sorts of situations. Yeah, actually I just wanna go and check the progress. So it looks like to me we've got, yeah, now we've got not not very much left here. So it's, oh, why have I got to start the engine again? I was just in this thing. I am thinking I'm going to turn automatic engine start off potentially, just to make make it a little bit easy to get in and out of the vehicles. The only reason I have it on is because of. Or other other let's plays where we where you need to be able to leave the machinery running when you when you exit it and automatic engine starts the only way to do that say for example when you're piping out or you're doing cut sugar beet or something like that because you need the equipment to run while you are not in it all right let's park this guy up here left just a small little patch Actually, I wonder if this contract is 
95%. Whoop. Hang on. So it could just be that we Yeah, we've just got to we've just got to deliver this last load. So what I'll do is I'll make sure I get all these little bits, just so we don't have the issue we had the other episode where we didn't get enough yield and therefore messed up the or missed missed out on collecting the contract. Alright, that's all of it. Let's go and unload. So we'll unload, unload from the high side, so we've learnt our lesson. Yeah, look at the difference. That's crazy. I mean, it is easy to forget because this map is very, uh, it's very hilly and very slopey. So it wouldn't be unusual for that to be the case. Alright, let's drive this guy over. And finish this contract. So I'll see you guys over there. Alright, here we are. Farm shop. Last load. Let's get this unloaded. Alright, contract is finished. Let's go and have a look at the contract menu. There we go. And collect. Alright, so let's just double check used vehicles. So there's nothing there. Uh, let's check our financials. Alright, so how did we go? So, four grand in property income, so that's from the solar panels. We got 8,365 in harvest income, so that was extra crop from the contracts that we were able to pocket. Then we got paid 18,472 for the actual contracts themselves. We wage payment of 5,000 roughly, which gives us a net profit of $25,905. So not a bad effort for today. Nice work. All right, we'll leave that video there, guys. Thanks very much for watching. Really appreciate it. Uh, any comments, leave them below. Don't forget to like the video. Share it around if you are so inclined. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps out the channel. Wouldn't be able to do these videos without you guys. So thanks very much, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. at 360 degrees. So what I'm gonna do here is just line this up perfectly. Well, it's close to, so we're at 359.8. So now what, if, what happens here is if I go allow create fields and make no adjustment to our heading, this will project a beautiful straight line off of this field. Hey guys, welcome back to AF Farms for another episode of Hot Bell on Start From Scratch. So kicking off today's episode, we are going to go and repair and refuel our Case IH Combine. So you can see there it's desperately, desperately in need of refueling and I've been putting off repairing it for a few episodes now. So we'll head over to the shop and we'll get that done quickly. And then while we're on the way there, we'll talk about what we're going to do today. So we're going to uh, invest in that Lizard Subsoiler. So we're going to go to the 9 meter and we're going to use our T9 New Holland tractor to plow our field that we own and possibly extend that field in preparation for putting in some, some grass. So the theory behind that is going to be to get into silage in some capacity, the silage bales I'm thinking, just as a way to st start to uh, boost our income. So let's get that fueling happening. So the refueling is a little bit of a process, but we are done. Cool, $817 in fuel. So while we're here, we're gonna get this uh, combine and header repaired. Now we've also got the sprayer there. We haven't utilized as yet. So if I'm, I'm thinking if I just park here, I'll be able to interact and there we go. So let's go 
So 10 grand for repairs, no, 2 grand to repair the draper header. So let's go triangle to repair. Yes, and repair the combine. Excellent. Alright. So I'll just park these off to the side momentarily. And we'll go and grab this subsoil as well. Alright, so that's fine. Let's jump into the store. So the one we're getting is, it's in the plough section, it's the Lizard 9 meter, 6 meter subsoil. We're going to go the 9 meter variety, and we're going to keep it in OG red, because that's just how we roll. Uh, we're going to buy that outright for 20 Gs, or 19,000, sorry. Alright, we've got that there. Let's go and jump into T9. So we haven't, tried, we haven't used the T9 for anything yet, so now seems like a good opportunity. Now we've possibly got some contracts we can utilise, so we may do that while we're uh, attending to this field. However, I just want to get this underway because I've been putting it off for a few episodes and I've got the T9 sitting here and ready to go, so I want to make the use of that. So. so I must say, I think the T9 is probably up there with my favourite large tractors. I mean, I am a fan of the John Deere 9RX. But just something about the New Holland Blue and just the design of this thing. I find it really, uh, I don't know, quite interesting. Right, let's make our turn so we don't miss the farm. Uh, one thing I should start to do is get those customised num number plates for AF Farms, so I'll have to remember to do that in the next purchase. Right, let's head over to our field. So, what I'm also thinking is probably extending into this area here. So, I'm going to take this field and push it out to about this, in, in line with this concrete edge where the grass meets. And do the same basically to about probably, well, we do have a bit of a narrowing. So, I don't want to, I want to try and retain the squareness of the field. So, there is a little trick to make sure we get... Uh, dead straight field. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drive over this because this, this is withered soybeans So it's of absolutely no use to us. It's full of weeds I'm Not too worried about destroying the crop at this stage But what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to Extend this field. So what I'm going to do Is we'll lower this plow. So lower plow now what, what you want to do, is you want to basically line up your GPS as close to 360 degrees as possible. So you can see in the bottom left hand corner of the map, you've got a little GPS marked, marker for your longitude and latitude. So as long as you're pointing at 360 degrees, so what I'm going to do here is just line this up perfectly. Well, it's close to, so we're at 359.8. So now what if what happens here is if I go allow create fields and make no adjustment to our heading, this will project a beautiful straight line off of this field into the unplowed field. So you can see that there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it to this edge. Okay, lift the plow. This is where it gets a little bit tricky. So what you, what are you got to do now? We're facing at 90 degrees. So what I'm going to do is try and get this lined up with the edge we just put in. So the closer you can get it to, so that's 88.2. That's 91. The closer you can get it to right angles with each other, the straighter your fields are going to be. If you're doing it, so this is, we're at 89.8. So I'm going to drop that plow in. And what should happen here is, so looking pretty good. So let's just see what happens. So if I project the line going this way at 90 degrees, or roughly 90 degrees and make no adjustment to the camera we'll end up with a perfectly straight run and what I'll do is I will end it 
So I'm going to swing the camera around, but this shouldn't affect our heading. Line it up just so we're in line with the edge of the field we want to extend. Now look, you don't have to do this, but this is just my preference. I think the plan ultimately for me would to be combine all these fields. The only downside to that is you can't have, you basically got one crop of, one huge crop of everything. So I'm going to go limit to fields just while I get this lined up. So now we're at zero degrees. Uh, let's go allow create fields. So you can see we're a tad wider. But that's okay, I'm not too worried about that. And now what I'll do here is drive it up just till we get the, to the edge here. And we've got a pretty almost. Now if you're a bit OCD and you want to have everything perfect. There we go. So we just fly out. We've basically put a nice straight edge. Obviously we've missed a little bit here, but that's just probably possibly an unplayable area. Maybe. We'll see. But now what we're going to do is we're going to fill in this section here that's not ploughed. And then we are going to plant some grass. So I will get this done and then we'll check it back in in a few minutes. All right, here we go. Last little bit to join these fields. So you'll notice too, the ground texture that was there, so the concrete, the grass, the dirt, it all just gets amalgamated into the ploughed state. So it effectively gives us brand new fields. So I'm gonna uh, limit to fields. So a quick look in the PDA, not the PDA, the build mode. So you can see there, nice little bit of a field extension. Got a little bit of a overlap just there, but that's nothing to worry about. And we've just probably increased that field size by, I don't know, let's say a third. So if we go a third there, another third there. So we just added, I don't know. I don't know what the terms in square meterage would be, but it's a significant amount. So what we'll do now is we'll get this guy underway on a worker. So just make sure that's... Yeah, limiting the fields because I don't want to overplow it. Get the worker underway. Now this is probably going to bring up some field stone, which is fine. Now I don't think we have to deal with the field stone if we're going to plant grass. Because we could just roll the field to push those stones back down. But we'll see what happens. Alright, let's go and check out contract menu. Alright, looks like we've got a canola harvest we can get on board with, so I'm going to borrow the items for this. So field 21, uh, triangle to borrow items. Okay, so let's go and send our JCB fast track. So looks like we're, we're using the similar equipment we did uh, last harvest. So what I like to do is I like to use contracts when I'm doing something on my own farm just to make the use of opportunities to make money. So field 21 is all the way up there, so let's go. Let's go to just here. So it's about maximizing productivity as much as possible. So what we'll do is we'll send we'll send our combine fleet. So generally what I find with the workers is so I want PS5, so they're a little bit temperamental, but if we're having issues getting them started, line them up on the road and send them uh, to the nearest road. So let's go that way. So now this guy's more likely to not have an issue. And you also want to send them uh, in the direction that is going to make it easy for them to park. Because what they'll try and do is they'll want to they'll want to face they'll want to face the direction you put them in. So if you're not paying attention to what direction they're supposed to end up in can cause a bit of an issue. So if we just drop that off there, 
off we go, that snaps on. So we learnt our lesson last time from that. Where the header, unfortunately, fell off halfway en route to the field. So I am going to drive... So I'm going to drive this guy up there. So I'll meet you guys up at that contract and then we'll get started with the harvest. Alright, we're all here, we've made it in one piece. So we've got our got our combine, so our own combine. And this is the least one, so we'll set up just on the on the side here. So let's get this uh, header connected. Right, we'll send this guy off on a worker straight away. Okay, let's drive this guy into a better position. Uh, now, one thing I didn't do with these guys is I didn't wash, didn't wash the uh, header and combine itself, so they're still a little bit dirty from last harvest, but not a not a huge issue. Now, having this big header is such a huge time saver. I mean, the efficiency gains from this alone are well worth the investment. All right, we are underway. All right, let's go check on our plowing. Okay, so this guy is stalled for some reason. What I'm thinking is we've got to do a headland row, so let's do that. So one thing I do notice with the uh, subsoiler is it does tend to leave, especially the nine meter, it does tend to leave uh, parts of the field unplowed on each run. So hopefully by doing this we'll have more room to turn around. So I've got a feeling it might have been because of crop destruction. So you can see we just missed a bit there. So I'll drop that back down. Because it looks like we've got some sorghum just behind us. Which I don't think we can destroy because we don't own the field. So let's just test that out. Yeah. You can only destroy the crops that you own. All right, the steering takes a little bit of getting used to on these articulated tr uh, tractors. So we'll send this guy off on a worker. We'll just do this run. And then what I'm going to do is I'll line him up. Line him up on this opposite end. And we should be good to, we should be good to complete this actually. Shouldn't run into any issues now. I mean, this lizard subsoiler is an absolute game changer. It's probably one. It's probably e easily my favourite uh, ground preparation implement. I mean, when this first came out, that's what I used to plough no man's land to get those really massive fields before we had the uh, field mods. All right, let's go check on our harvest. So it looks like our our, our owned combine is ready to go. So that makes sense. Look at this. Look at the coverage area. So that's three runs, three and a half runs, and we're all ready to go. All right, let's get this guy unloaded. So let's double check where we've got to go. Okay, so let's go to go to the farm shop. Cool. All right, while this guy's underway, I'm going to get a cultivating contract underway. Let's just go. Let's go to this guy. So let's borrow the items for that. So what I aim to do is try and get. So we can have up to six workers at any one time. So if you want to maximise your productivity utilizing the workers to your best ability uh, is the name of the game so field one if I am not mistaken is all the way up there so I'm going to send this guy over on a worker so we go we've got four on the go at the moment so we've got three doing field work and one driving to target so this guy is good so you can see about the uh, the subsoil there how it misses those little sections so I have to come back through and fix those up. Uh, this guy's probably missed a little bit of crop as well. 17 kph, so I think this is the Titan Draper, especially going downhill. So we hit maximum speed there. Okay, this guy's on task nicely. Got the uh, John Deere front weight, it looks like. 
or it could be a lizard front weight. Little Valtra, so what brand of cultivator we've got? We've got the Horsch Tirano 3FX. So I believe that is base game. I don't have the Horsch pack, so uh, not yet anyway. All right, we'll check in on this guy once they make it up to the field. And this guy's just powering through. Love it. We might even just, this might even just be a one load trip to the cell point for this field. I mean, it's looking that way. We'll jump into this guy. So I'm going to do this last little bit manually. So we've got a couple of little bits here. A little bit in the middle down there, so we'll go and grab that. So I think once we can get a once we get a second tractor, I mean we would have had, would have had two tractors if I kept that McCormick tractor, which I absolutely should have kept in hindsight. And a suitable trailer, we would we won't need to worry about I'm just gonna see if I can sneak past this guy. We won't need to worry about borrowing the items for these contracts. Which will further boost our profits because we're not having to pay the lease fee and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, that working with is amazing. And a small little bit just on the edge there. Oh, that's it. Let's raise that header up. Get our pipe out. All right, all ploughed. Got a little bit of fixing up to do. Grab this last little bit. Hopefully our other combine's still unloading. Got a feeling it's not. Get this guy emptied. Okay, this guy's empty. Awesome. All right, so we'll get him folded up. Actually, you know what? I might just leave. I might just leave him here because I want to say here. I'll park off the off the, off to the side because there's no real need to get this guy back to our main farm. He can just stay stationed up here just in case we've got to drive him up here again. Just saves on fuel. Okay, that guy's done. Right, let's go and drive this over to the cell point. So I am going to drive this one over. We are, yeah, so we've got a bit of a ways to go. So let's go, let's go this way. This is where we had our crash the other day with the AI workers. So make sure we're driving the right side of the road here. All right, I'll drive this up to the cell point and I'll meet you guys over there. Alright, here we are coming up to the farm shop, just admiring the nice patch of sunflowers to our right. Quite picturesque right there. Alright, let's go and get this unloaded. So this should be it, this is the only load we've got to do, so this is a nice and efficient quick contract. Alright, job done. So that is... Field 21 is, yeah, finished. Okay, so let's go and collect on that. Okay, field 21, so we've got three grand out of that. Minus 700 for lease costs. So let's collect. Okay, this guy can stay here. Alright, let's finish off. Let's finish up plowing up this little mist section. So I'm not sure why this happens. It could just be the 9 meter plow that does this. But it seems to be sort of every second run on the reverse. Which is a bit unusual, but I mean it is what it is. Uh, another thing we could probably look to start doing is doing some field flipping because we've got a bit of cash now. So uh, yeah, because we've got a bit of land uh, available. So I mean we've got a bit of cash to, to, to buy the land and then sell it back. So this plot here is 112,000. It's got sorghum on it. Sorghum can be harvested if I'm not mistaken, now. Okay, so maybe we're gonna do, maybe we'll do that. Just to give us a bit of crop to sell, because we've got our combine. Uh, we could very easily, could very easily get a trailer and tow it with, with the T9 
a T9 you hold. Just double check it is a T9. I mean, I should know. And also looks like we've got soybeans or sugar beets growing here. This looks like potatoes or sugar beets. Yeah, sugar beets. Not quite ready to harvest, but that's probably something we'll we'll pass on. Just a little bit too expensive at this stage to get involved with. All right, yeah, and, we, and then we're obviously going to plant some grass there, so something to think about. All right, guys, thanks for watching this episode. Much appreciated. Uh, if you've got any questions, leave a comment below. Uh, otherwise, I will see you in the next one. Bye for now. No, 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 no. What is that? Oh, God. What is going on here? Oh, wow. Okay, that was a bit of a fail. Anyway, I might cut that out. Hey guys, welcome back to AF Farms for another episode of Hot Bellaroon Start From Scratch. So carrying on from last episode, we've just finished up with a harvest contract. We've fin finally purchased the uh, su lizard subsoil so we can expand and start working on our own fields. Um, we're just driving back to the main farm now because we're going to flip a field uh, which has some soil on it. So we're going to utilize our combine here and we've got enough cash in the bank to buy that field, harvest the crop and then flip it and then they'll give us some sorghum to sell. So while we're doing that we might actually invest in purchasing a, see if we can get a reasonably reasonably priced trailer. Now it looks like we're probably going to have to lease one. I'm, I am open to buying one full price, however I just, I want to be mindful of not making a sort of rash purchase on that, on that front. So. Let's head over to the farm, we'll go and purchase that land, and we'll go from there. So I'll send this guy back on a worker, actually. No, 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 no. What is that? Oh, God. What is going on here? Oh, wow. Okay, that was a bit of a fail. Anyway, I might cut that out. Oh, I can't even pick this up. Alright, what I meant to do there was enter the worker menu, but instead I hired a worker, and that automatically tries to unfold everything. It's a bit of, it's a bit silly how it says hire worker when every other um, implement says open AI worker menu. I mean, I'd be, I wish it was consistent. So let's go set destination. Let's go down here. I guess it just depends on the implement could be a well I've got no idea I'm not going to speculate because I don't know but just consistency would be nice across machinery okay so we've got our subsoil there we've just ploughed out uh, field 38 so this is field 39 is the one that's got the sorghum on there so that's the one we're going to purchase so let's go and do that so we jump into our PDA open up the land menu select that uh, we'll buy it we now own that. Oh, we've also got this guy under contract too for field one, so let's get him underway. Actually, forgot about this guy. So this is just a lazy $1,000 contract. Nice animation on the uh, cultivator though. Very cool. Okay, this guy is on the way. Alright, any used equipment? No, nope, we don't have anything. Okay, so let's see if we're... Yeah, so it looks like we're... Oh, we could possibly get this one. I've used the class Karat before. Quite liked it. Uh, look, it's probably going to be this one, eh? Now, we do have the uh, trailer fill limit setting turned on. Oh, this comes with an extension, too. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we'll go to the extension for two and a half grand. Trollborgs, standard wheels. All right, let's buy this. So it's going to be 20 grand. We've got four Gs in the bank after that. Yeah, I'm happy. Okay, 20,000, yes. All right, let's see. Yeah, this guy is, so let's take over. So we'll just use our T9 to tow that trailer. I mean, it's a bit of overkill having a 500 horsepower tractor tow such a small trailer but 
part of the reason why we invested in the T9 is because we got that ability to do just about everything that we need to uh, horsepower requirement wise it's never going to be an issue I mean I say never but unlikely now I wonder if we can get straw out of this too I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop it I can't remember if someone gives you straw I mean, I'm sure someone in the comments will know so well, let's drop off this subsoiler go and grab our grain cart and obviously we've got nowhere to store the sorghum so we are just going to sell it straight away I mean the other downside with this tractor is it's only got a 30 kph top speed uh, whatever, whatever that is in mph I have no idea just safe to say it's pretty slow alright I'll head on over pick this up and I'll see you guys there All right, here we are. New purchase, ready and waiting. I hope this goes on. There's no reason why it shouldn't. There we go, excellent. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try to do a sneaky cut through here. Saves us having to go through the long way. I mean, we could put a bit of a part, I'll put a bit of a road in here at some stage. And obviously the plan is to purchase field 37 as well. I want to get rid of those trees just to sort of open up the area a little bit that would be very handy I wonder if I've turned the traffic off I haven't seen cars for a long time so what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly turn that traffic back on yeah I wonder if I must have had an unfortunate incident somewhere along the line where I've had to turn it off I do normally play with it on uh, it does irritate me no end, to no end however I just like it because of the immersion factor but if you see me raging at traffic occasionally uh, just know it's by choice alright let's get this guy unloaded there we go there's a the car I'm watching you buddy Trying to break the land speed record. Maybe it's Jeremy Clarkson. Anyway. So it'd be interesting to see if we do hit the trailer fill limit at some stage with some of these crops. I mean it might be unlikely, but we'll we'll see. Let's check in on this guy. So our field one's relatively small, so this shouldn't take too long at all. Let's have a quick look at our contracts menu. Uh, we've got another cultivating contract we can get underway, so I'm gonna do that. So it's only a thousand. So we'll just borrow the items for that. So we've got the John Deere 87810. So I think this is... It might be the exact or very similar to the one you start with on Elm Creek. It might be a manual too. Or a stick shift. Depending on where you are in the world. But I think this guy's got to go to field 8, we said. Okay, so let's open that worker menu. Who have we got driving today? I mean, nice detail on the uh, hitch area. And nice animation on the tire tread, actually. I do like the colours in this game, too. Very, they're very vibrant. Right, enough of that. Let's check in on our workers. So this guy is doing nicely. He's got basically probably two probably two runs left so let's go and position down no, I probably can just hang out here actually to be honest turn that engine off to save fuel right this guy's full again so what I'm going to do is I'll just back back it in just save moving the uh, the tractor closer obviously we're on the wrong side for piping out so just try and do this as efficiently as possible all right let's get back underway 
So really not much left at all though. Work underway again. This guy's probably about halfway, I would say. Right, field eight, perfect timing. So I'll resume control and we'll get this guy working pretty much straight up. Let's make sure we're getting all the field there. Built, nice work. Right, let's. Uh, before we do that, let's check for the best price for sorghum currently. Uh, Marisomes, that's the train. Actually, I'm going to go to the grain mill because we want to try and fill that up. Actually, I'm going to have to make two trips here. Unless... Oh, unless this, this should... Perfect. Absolutely perfect. All right, I'm just going to park this guy off to the side. Turn the engine off. I've got to get into the habit of turning the engine off because that is chewing through our fuel. Has this got a cover? No. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Let's head over to the grain mill and try not to get taken out by the traffic. See? Told ya. I love it, but I hate it at the same time. What a crazy mixed up world. All right, well, I'm going to drive this. I'm on the right. Um, yeah, I'm on the right side of the road. I hope. I'm from the southern hemisphere, so we drive on the left side. So that's why I'm all over the place when I drive. No place like home, right? All right, I'm going to drive this over. I'll see you guys over there. Alright, here we are coming up to the grain mill. Alright, so here we are at the grain mill. So like I keep mentioning, anything you put into the grain mill, when we go to purchase this, this grain that we put in will be available for us to turn into flour. So we're basically double dipping. We're getting paid to deliver the grain and then that grain that's in there, we can utilize to turn into flour products, which in turn we can turn into bread uh, once we purchase it. So seven grand I mean not bad also not amazing keeping in mind we can flip that field back straight away so we're not going to have an issue all right I'm going to drive this guy back over on a worker all right hopefully we don't run into any issues there contract on field one is coming along nicely probably what I should have done is I should have went the long or should have went the long runs here just so there's less time turning around and this guy is actually making pretty good time. Nicely done. Uh, I am going to get this guy, actually, what we'll do before we do anything else is we need to sell this field on. So back into the menu. Sell it for 1200. I wonder if we can, I wonder if that wheat over there it says wheat in, so there's wheat in field 37. How much is this field to buy? 276,000 so a bit too expensive for us at this stage but definitely something we would look to uh, get on board with once we've got the once we've got the cash there all right let's uh, f uh, fold this header as well just in preparation for our next contract potentially all right this guy's making his way back nicely contracts are going along swimmingly all right this guy's made it back nicely, well done. All right, let's have a look at the contracts. There was a fertilizing contract that we possibly could look to do. I mean, fertilizing is very expensive, so it's probably not ideal. Got another like, harvesting contract we can look to do. Field 18, so where's field 18? Uh, it's a relatively short commute. Don't particularly want to send, I mean, I will if I have to, like it's not the end of the world. But what I'm probably more interested in doing is getting some grass planted, actually. So let's go and check out what we can utilize to plant grass. So, uh, what do we got? Grassland care. So we got the Dalbo Maxi Roll 6.3 green line for 26,000. 
So this thing will fertilize and seed for us. So if we chuck a cedar on there. And for 30 grand, not bad. Okay, what else we got? So we've got the APV GK300. So this will do the same. And it will also do canola. Pretty small working with though. So I think what we'll do, what we will do is we'll go the maxi roll green line. So what we can do with this thing is we can seed and we can also fertilize with this. So obviously when we do the rolling, that's going to give us a fertilizer state. It's got a 6.3 meter working width and 100 horsepower tractor requirement. So if we do come across a small or medium tractor, we'll be able to utilize this uh, as well. So let's purchase that outright. So that's 29,500. So yes to purchase. All right, let's jump in the T9. Just make sure our combine's turned off. So we'll head on over to the farm shop, pick up the cedar. I mean, grass roller, cedar, whatever you want to call it. So I'll head over to the shop and I'll see you guys over there. All right, here we are. So we can see our seed is there. So we're going to have to get some seed for it. All right, let's grab some seed. So let's go, yeah, we'll just go a pallet. So we'll see how many pallets it takes to fill this thing. I mean, the hopper's pretty small, so I can't imagine. Now this should connect. Okay, refill the roller. So it only takes 250 litres. All right, hopefully. Hopefully this seed goes a long way. Got a feeling that it's potentially not going to. I mean, it'd have to. It'd have to. Why else would you put a cedar on there? I mean, I guess we're about to find out. So, let's drive this on over, and we'll see how we go. All right, here we are. Let's see how we go. Okay, so let's get this unfolded. Uh, We've got grass selected. We've got... So let's lower the roller. Let's just see what happens here. So... Uh, turn on roller, perhaps? Okay, so we may get a fair... We may get a fair chunk of... Okay, so this might work out actually. Looks like this seed's going to go a reasonably long way. So what I'm probably going to do is I'll do this, I'll do this edge, and then I'll do that headland row, and then I'll set this off on a worker. Then we'll go check in on our, check in on our contracts. And what we'll be able to do, what we'll be able to do here as well is we'll be able to mow the grass on the verges. To increase our yield just that little bit extra so that'll be handy actually okay that's good lift roller all right it's going to swing around so this should be a good little purchase actually it's not something i've used before but any any piece of machinery that allows you to do two jobs or multiple jobs so in this case being able to plant the grass so let's lower that roller down. Uh, turn off the rollers on. Yeah, so being able to plant the grass and then subsequently being able to fertilize it by rolling to improve our yield is going to be a big time saver. So this should work out well. And obviously we only have to plant the grass once and it will grow back as an evergreen crop. So that will further improve the situation. Okay, see if my reversing skills are any good this time. Have we? Oh, no, we might be right. Okay, let's send this guy off on a worker. I'm overlapping slightly just because I don't want to miss any of Probably missed a tiny bit, but that's all right. All right, let's go check in on our contracts. Done. And almost done. Okay, so let's collect. So that's an easy 900, collect that. 
So we've got a couple of bailing contracts. I mean, we could get in, get into those, but I know they're very labor intensive. So if I know I've got a lot of other stuff on, I'll probably stay away from it. A few more, a few more harvesting contracts sitting there. Probably something I'll pass on for now. Right, I think what we're going to do for the rest of this episode is potentially get this grass field completed. So I've still got the worker underway at the moment. See if they can negotiate the field. So far, so good. This guy's still doing his thing. All right, let's have a look at some potential tractors. So if we're looking at the small tractors, what's, what have we got in the top of the range? So the Valtra N series, uh, the class Arion that we passed on earlier. So we can't quite afford any of these at the moment. What about the medium tractor department? So the Macy Ferguson MF6700. Uh, what can we afford in the small tractor department? To the Valtra A series. So that's 135 horsepower. So we'll be able to utilize this for grass work. I think probably what we do need, mm, it's still a bit pricey. I'd probably like to get a any of the Fent Varios, any of the 7Rs, JCB Fast Track, that'd be good. Uh, the Fent Vario 1000 is probably the most versatile. However, it's quite expensive. So in the medium tractor department, probably any of, the, any of these sort of higher end so let's just sit on that for the moment, I think. All right, this guy is nearly done, so. Okay, grass field is coming along nicely. So let's just check out the growth status. So what do we got? So grass growing, 30, 35% yield bonus, needs lime, needs rolling. So I think the rolling refers to pushing these stones in. So that's with a uh, where are we? A field roller. So one of these one of these guys. So these two are base game, the Dalbo power roll and the Dalbo mega roll. So they'll they're there to mitigate the field stone and also give you a five two and a half percent yield bonus. Uh, and also it needs lime. So let's go and check the PDA actually, because we haven't actually done any arable work so far. So I haven't been paying attention to the uh, field states. So here we are. If we go to field 38, ploughed. We've got, so it is fertilized somewhat. Uh, where's the lime? Oh, I've got it all turned off. That's handy. Okay, let's try this. Weeds, plowing, lime, rolling, mulched stones. Okay, all that's turned on. Okay, grass. I don't know why grass is turned off by default. Never understood that. If anyone knows, please let me know. Okay, so we've got growth state on our grass. We've got a plowed state on our field. Uh, we've got yellow stones so that would indicate small stones uh, that section of field we're standing on needs lime so i wonder if we can lime oh look i'm not going to worry about the lime for now once we get the equipment to handle it we'll put it on so if i go over to our og field which is over here yeah so we're 100 fertilized because we plowed in that withered crop this new section that we're on over here needs lime okay good to know all right, this guy's all done. Let's collect on that. Okay, $848, nicely done. So just checking in on our contract earnings. So we've got 23,000 in contract income, uh, 17,000 from harvest income, 8,000 in wages, roughly speaking. And we're showing a $43,000 loss so far for August. However, that is taking into vehicle running costs, 11,000. That was for the repairs. And we bought 68,500 in new vehicles. So that would have been the trailer and the roller. And possibly something else. We don't own that much stuff, so. And how's our loan amount, actually? Our loan is, where's it tell us our loan amount? Ah, oh, 250, yeah. So not, nothing to worry about there. Pretty minuscule. All right. Well, I'm going to leave this guy to tend to this field, getting our grass, getting our grass in, and then we'll come back in the next episode and we will check out how we're traveling with the grass. We'll try and get a growth state on it uh, in preparation for its first mow. So the things we're going to be looking out for, uh, we're going to want a small tractor. Oh, we're out of out of seed. Oh, stitch up. How'd that happen? <laughs> Alright, well what I'm going to do is I'm going to go refill this cedar 
and hopefully not have a collision with this car. So I'm going to go refill the cedar. We're going to get the rest of this field uh, sorted and planted. And then we'll come back in for the next episode and go from there. So thanks very much for watching. Really appreciate it. Like I said, any comments, leave them below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. Now, I may or may not have chosen to take a shortcut on the way back to the farm, seeing as I didn't want to drive the long way around. So, yeah, it's exactly what it looks like. Hey guys, welcome back to AF Farms for another episode of Hot Bellon Start From Scratch. So, carrying on from last episode, we just finished planting our grass field. So, we've slept for one day. It's now September, and we've got a growth state on the grass. So in preparation for, uh, well basically we're going to try and do silage, probably silage bales at this stage. However, we've got to get some equipment for that. I've also had a bit of a tidy up of the farmyard. So I've just got the equipment that we've got currently. So we've got our harvester, T9 New Holland, uh, class trailer, and our grass roller slash cedar. And everyone's favourite, lizard subsoiler. The king of ploughs, I like to say. Uh, Alright, so we've slept, we've gotten some used vehicles, I want to say used vehicles, and of course, the Dalbo Maxirol 630 Green Line has come up for sale uh, used, even though last episode we purchased a brand new one, so such is life, but there you go, always seems to be the way. Now we've got 109 grand in the bank, we do have, so we've got a cultivator here, what's the width on that? That's f 14 metres. So our T9 would be able to tow that. What I'm really interested in is this Valtra G series. So up to 145 horsepower. And this is going to be our machine for uh, grassland care and work. So mowing, rolling and seeding. But primarily mowing, probably wind rowing as well. But yeah, basically grassland care. So, so we are going to fit it out with the... So if we get to the engine section... We're going to go the 145 horsepower engine option for an extra 17 grand. Uh, we're going to go out. I always go troll borgs. I mean, I'd be interested in if, if you guys in the comments have different experience with using different tyres. So whether they give you more traction, less traction, change up the gameplay mechanics, or if they're purely cosmetic. I'd be interested to find out about that. But I just go troll borgs because why not? Uh, I think we're going to go... Considering going narrow tyres for fertilising, but probably not at this stage. Obviously, because we own it, we'll be able to uh, modify it down the track, but we'll just stick with standards for now. That's now just the uh, controls in the centre, so we'll just leave that as is. I'm going to go a front loader at some stage probably as well, but we'll just leave that for now. Uh, we'll change the colour, so I'm just going to go possibly maybe New Holland Blue or something like that. Red, silver, yeah, maybe, maybe silver. And then I'm going to change the rim colour as well. So let's go white rims. So that looks pretty smart. Maybe we should change the colour on the uh, main body. JCB yellow. Shootin? Shoutin? I think it's shootin. So they're the pump and hose uh, people. I mean, I could be able to, I could spend all day here trying to figure out a colour, couldn't I? Uh, look, let's just go. Let's just go silver. All right. Let's get our AF Farms licence plate. So I will... What are we going to do? Let's go this... Let's try this one. All right. AF Farms... Happy days. Okay, let's go. Okay, let's just see what that looks like on the vehicle. Cool. So that should be our default license plate for anything moving forward. All right, let's uh, let's buy that. So sixty-three thousand. I feel like we've redeemed ourselves from letting go of that McCormick tractor that we sort of messed up on. Cool. Nice. So this probably actually needs a front weight as well. So uh, I will uh, won't worry about the front weight now. What we probably need to do is let's check on our contracts quickly. So what do we got? Baling, cultivating, we've got harvesting still. We've got a decent cultivating contract. I wonder if we can use the lizard subsoil for that. I do want to get it cracking with the mowing. So how many growth states do we need? Let's go back to the main farm. So I think it is, because we've still got seasons turned on so we can grow up until, yeah, we've still got plenty of time for that. Okay, let's go over to our crop states. 
Uh, it is. So for some reason grass is turned off again. Oh, it's going to be one more day and then we can probably harvest it. So let's go and sleep. So it could just be two two days of growth. And when I say two days, I've got one day months at the moment. So I may change that if it's becoming a bit of an issue with the season calendar. I know a lot of people play with uh, two day seasons or three day seasons. I'm yet to see someone do 28 day seasons. I think that's a bit nuts. It just seems like it's a good sort of halfway point for things like this where you, yeah. So we're ready to harvest, so that's great. So that's what we wanted. So that was two days of in-game growth. Uh, we still got the maxi roll. We've got the big roller, which we don't need. All right, let's go and see which sort of mower we're going to purchase. So what are we, how much cash have we got? 58,000. Okay, so we, uh, we've we got 145 horsepower at, us, at our disposal, if I can remember where the mowers are. All right, so question is whether we're going to go the front and rear setup. I mean, looking at this, it looks like we are. That's 180 horsepower, so that's out of our ballpark. That's 70, that's 160, which we don't have the horsepower for. That'll do 10 meters. What's the Kunis Pro? Not the Kunis Pro, the Kun GMD 8.3. So this is what I've used before as well. Yeah, let's grab it. So I'm gonna buy both of those. Uh, we could go the, could go this one, but I think I'd prefer, much prefer to have the, the larger working width. So let's buy that for 25 grand. Okay, now, but before we get mowing, let's have a look at contracts. Okay, we've got a small cultivating contract. We've got a couple of harvesting contracts. Still got those bailing contracts. So it's a thousand, so let's accept that. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to use our T9 and the subsource. I'll accept the contract without borrowing the items. So pressing square on that one. And we're gonna utilize our own equipment for a change, which is actually a nice change of pace. So what it means is we'll get a, we, we don't have to take the hit, albeit a small hit on the, um, on the, Field 24. So where we're we going? Yeah, taking a small hit on the lease fee. It's usually quite small, but nonetheless. And looks like we're in full too. So nice uh, visual change on the map. I do like that. All right, what I'm going to do is I'll send this guy over on a worker. So the T9 will drive to the rough location, and then AI worker C not ready to drive. 9 MT not in transport mode. How is that not? How is that not in transport mode? I don't understand. Okay, let's try this again. Oh, you tell me, don't tell me you can't drive this over. Oh, get real. So what's transport mode? It can't be like that, surely. Alright, through the magic of editing, I am going to drive this over and I will see you guys up there. All right, here we are coming up to field 24. So it's just here. Now, because this is technically a plow, this may not be suitable for a cultivating contract, which would really suck having driven this far and then not being able to carry out the work. Let's see if this will work. Don't have access to this land. What? Ah, it's because it's not a cultivator. I guarantee it. So, yeah, yep, exactly what I thought. So let's lower that. So because it'll turn it into a plowed state, it's not going to, yeah, it's not going to work. So let's, uh, here I am talking up this plow slash cultivator slash subsoiler. I mean, I still love it. I think it's the best plow in the game just not suitable for cultivating contracts so it's got to be in the cultivator category clearly which uh is a bit annoying but let's drive on back so there's five minutes of my life i'm not going to get back but anyway live and learn so i'll see you back at the main farm now i may or may not have chosen to take a shortcut on the way back to the farm seeing as i didn't want to drive the long way around so yeah it's exactly what it looks like. Now I've obviously had to drive this back manually because the AI worker won't drive with the subsoiler on the back uh, for whatever reason. So we're just going to go park up and we're going to jump in the Valtra. Alright, here we go. Let's get this mower hooked up. 
And let's go cut some grass. Yeah, the Vulture is a bit of a zippy little thing. Alright, here we go. Let's take our little shortcut. Oops, we can get some air. Whoa! Off-road style. I really love the detail on the mowers, it's particularly this uh, little air or wind detail. Very, very nice. Alright, let's go and cut some grass. So, now what I potentially should have done here is rolled this field. So, what's our fertilizer state? Yeah. So, if we had rolled it and then. Yeah, if we had rolled it and then slept for another day, we probably would have increased our yield a little bit. But I'm just. I just want to get some. Just want to get some mowing done. So, let's turn that mower on. Okay, lower mower. Turn it on. And we should be cooking with gas. Not unless you're in Victoria, Australia, who have just implemented a gas ban. So uh, it's a bit unfortunate for uh, my southern cousins. But that's Australia for you. Alright, yeah, if you're, from, if you're watching from Victoria, give me a shout out. Much appreciated. Alright, here we go. So we are... We're off. So I think the uh, plan too is I'm going to extend the grass fields into basically where this cotton is, where this path is, so I can just have one huge grass field. The reason why I want to do that is, well, basically have a heap of grass to cut, A. Eh? And I'm thinking what I'm probably going to do is add sheep into the roster for money making strategies. The reason I would want to choose sheep is if we're going to go grass, we've got obviously grass, we can turn that into hay. We can feed the grass to sheep and we can feed the hay to sheep to produce us wool. We can also bale the grass, turn it into grass silage. So we've got a couple of different options available to make money out of this grass. And I've just said grass about 15 times in 30 seconds, but you get the idea. Alright, so I'm just going to go around the perimeter and then we'll set this guy off on a worker. And we will go from there. So, almost there. Now, truth be told, we're probably going to need a windrower of some sort as well. So, I might actually go and check out the shop. See if there's... I do have my eye on one that we can... That I like to buy outright. So, it's also the Kun brand. I do love the mowing animation. I mean... Mowing is one of my favourite pastimes in real life as well. But my uh, personal mower looks nothing like this, I can tell you that. Alright, let's get the worker going. Alright, nice work. Okay, so wind rowers. So let's go and have a look at that. Okay, so we've got a couple of reasonably priced options. The one that we're probably going to go for ideally would be either the Swardro or the GA15131. This is the one I use on Erlengrat, but obviously it's 60 grand, so it's a little bit up there. So we're probably more likely going to have to go for one of these smaller smaller working widths. How big is this one? This is 8.4. This is actually not too bad, really. So this is the San Sama Sa Mars. I've probably said that incorrectly. So feel free to correct me below. Uh, the Crone Swardro TS970. Oh, the other thing we're going to have to look at is getting a baler too. Oh, I hadn't even considered that. Jeez, that was a bit silly. Because we want to do silage bales, right? Oh, we're going to need some coin. Hmm. And all this stuff is very expensive. Hmm, okay. Alright, let's check in on our mower. Nice job. I mean, at least we do have... We do have a new tractor for the roster. We've got some mower equipment. We've got our harvester, so we can utilize that for harvesting. So we could probably, well, realistically, we could probably look to get another contract underway while we're waiting for, I'm gonna to have to abandon this one. We tried, we had the fail on earlier, so I'm just gonna cancel that. Cause there's no way we're gonna collect on it because I don't have a cultivator of our own. Uh, what do I got here? This is a, uh, this one is corn, don't have the correct header for that. And this one's sunflowers, don't have the correct header for that. 
Okay, so we're SOL on that. Not to worry. Let's go and see. Let's have a look at Baylor's actually. So what can we afford at the moment? Not really. Yeah, we're going to have to either get a loan. So what we can afford with our tractor. Yeah, pretty small bales actually. That's going to be tiny. That's going to be tiny. I wonder if a forage wagon would be a better option. Because I would like to do silage bales from the get-go. That's 150 horsepower. That's 140. So we could do bale with end turner. So what is that? Oh, that just turns it on its end, so it's not... Okay. That makes sense. 145. Oh, jeez, we're going to have to... This is going to cost us a mint. Okay, let's go check out our financials. So what have we... What can we do here? So I really want to do silage bales because they're going to fetch the best price. So let's go have a look at the loan menu. If I can remember where it is. So we've got a current loan of 250000 we can borrow... Actually, well, let me check the repayments, actually. I know they were quite minuscule before. So 833000 I mean, $833, so not much. So let's just crank up this loan. I think we can only have a max of 500000 from memory. So we've got max loan, so I'm going to borrow that. Okay, so borrow that money. So we are really just leveraging, leveraging ourselves to the max here. So that will now give us the opportunity to purchase a new baler. Okay, so we are, uh, so we could do, could do a two-part process, but it probably makes sense to do an all-in-one. So if we go one of these, so we've got 445 horsepower. Will this wrap? This one will wrap for us. Okay, so that's 145 horsepower, 78,000. It'll do 125 centimeter bales. Uh, the Rotana will do basically the same. So what's the difference here? Not a huge amount. Let's just double check our tractor horsepower requirement. So it's 145 horsepower. So let's go with the let's go with the cheapest option that will do wrapping for us. So not this guy. So this one will do a round bale. Okay, it will. Okay, let's buy that. Jeez, I hope this works, but I'm we'll about to find out. And we'll go and buy the windrower that we want as well. So we're going to go the big fella. So let's go the, so how big is this? This is 8.4 meters. This one will do 14. I mean, the question is, do I be a little bit more conservative now, get something a bit smaller, or do we just go all out and make the investment early? Now nah, let's go the big one. This is the one I like, so yeah, let's buy that. All right, dropping a bit of money here. Hopefully this doesn't end us, but I'm sure it won't. Famous last words, right? Okay, let's drop this off. Let's go and pick up our... So we're going to windrow this first. Then we are going to bale it. So let's go and grab that. Go and grab that windrow. So I'll meet you guys over at the shop. Alright, let's check out these new purchases. Well, look at that. That baler is pretty big for this tractor. I mean, I'm sure it will work. Like... I know you can. Uh, I know you can get away with having slightly higher horsepower requirements than your tractor can can manage, and you're usually fine. But I try and stick to. I try and stick to the recommended horsepower rating. Look at the size of this windrower, though. Huge. So this is going to make short work of that field. That's for sure. I mean, it is overkill for the size of field we have currently, but in our grand plan. When we expand this uh, farm operation, it's gonna it's gonna come back to help us for sure. All right, let's get underway. So I'm gonna windrow this uh, first little section, and then we might uh, we'll see how we're traveling. So, oh, I missed a bit of grass. That was that was great. Anyway, I'll we'll get that next time. Not quite sure why they missed that. It's unusual. So this process is not gonna take very long at all. This is where I really favour having a big working width rather than a smaller working width. So let's see if I can turn this around and... Yeah. That was a nice little turn there, if I do say so myself. I mean, nice animation too on the wind rowers in particular. My compliments to the chef. 
and in this case the developers. Alright what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish off windrowing this and then we'll come back in for next episode and we'll get cracking on that bailing so thanks very much for watching guys really appreciate it uh, any comments or feedback leave them below consider liking the video sharing it around if you're new here subscribe to the channel really helps me out um, so yeah that'd be awesome if you could do those things otherwise I will see you in the next one and bye for now I mean, that wrapping animation is pretty cool. I mean, you wouldn't want to get stuck in there, would you? That'd be an untimely end. Hey guys, welcome back to AF Farms for another episode of Hort Belleron Start From Scratch. So currently we're finishing off our wind rowing. We started on last episode. So last episode we invested in a mower, new tr new Vulture tractor as you can see here uh, also picked up this new windrower so we've, we've taken out a pretty substantial loan to fund this equipment expansion so with the hope of basically recouping this over time uh, the loan cost is going to be covered by our solar panels so they're generating about 10,000 per month so they're, they're basically carrying the the costs there at the moment and yeah, so the plan is going to be to do uh, silage bales. So we've also picked up a baler and a wrapper in one. So it'll do round bales. The only thing that left that we require is a bale trailer. So I'll pick up one of the auto load trailers. They're about 10 to 20 grand. So we'll comfortably be able to manage that. And yeah, we'll start stockpile stockpiling silage bales. We don't have to replant the grass, obviously. It's just going to be let it grow, cut it, harvest it, repeat while we layer in some contract work so it just gives us a few um, avenues to make some money and start building out our farm a little bit more so what I'm going to do is I'll quickly finish this off and then we'll come back in once we're ready for baling so I'll see you guys in a couple of minutes Alright, here we are, we're just finishing up this little bit of wind rowing. So let's get this guy turned off. Get that parked, and then we'll go pick up our baler. So this little Valtra was a good little pickup. So it's 145 horsepower, small tractor. So it's really going to be able, it's going to allow us to really look after this, this grass enterprise quite comfortably. And then it will free up the T9 for bigger projects. So. We had a bit of a fail with the uh, subsoiler last episode, trying to do a cultivating contract. However, being a plow, it's going to leave a, pow a plowed state for that contract and not actually give a cultivated state, so the contract was unachievable. But live and learn on that one. Oh, stay on the road, dude. Alright, so this baler should be good to go. I don't think we need to buy bow wrapping oh please tell me this will connect okay turn on baler turn on automatic drop lower pickup don't require wrapping which is which is cool but i'm going to take a shortcut here i think what i will do eventually is i'm going to buy field 37 i know i've mentioned this before but i'm going to put a an access road in just to improve the transit time from the shop to the main farm and I do like this location because it is close to the shop. Pretty much any map where I can set up close to the shop, I'm a big fan of. So, just improves your transit time, etc. So, not having to drive back, back and forth too often. So, let's turn on automatic drop. Turn the baler on, lower the pickup. I mean, this is a cool baler. Okay, let's see how we go here. Should be able to get all this stuff up. We've got 17 kph bailing speed, so this should this should not take too long. Is that beeping because we're full? Okay, cool. Good to know. And I'm aware I just missed half of. Oh, I missed half. Okay, righto. Absolute bailing noob right here. So when it beeps, it's not taking on any more 
so we do have to stop okay does that empty now yeah cool so we do have to stop all right not the end of the world i mean the fact that we are bailing and wrapping all at once so let's get this full again yeah the fact that we're bailing and wrapping in one process is good because I'd much rather do that than do the bailing, then the wrapping, then the retrieval. Oh, it only does three and a half thousand litre bales too. Okay, I'm starting to see why. You would invest in a more, well, a better baler. Actually, I'm just going to quickly check what my options were and how they vary. So this guy does 125 centimetre bales. It doesn't tell the capacity, it's just the size. So what's the difference between these two? They do a bigger bale, okay. Probably much the same, to be honest. These ones don't wrap. Yeah, okay. I'm no bailing expert, as you can tell. Like, I don't often do bailing. But with these Let's Plays, I've been experimenting with different facets of the game. Trying to vary up the play style, that sort of thing. Utilize different equipment. I mean, that wrapping animation is pretty cool. I mean, you wouldn't want to get stuck in there, would you? That'd be an untimely end. Although accidents in the agriculture industry are quite uh, common and unfortunate. So it would be good if we didn't have to stop each time we had to drop a bale. We are pumping out quite a few for the time that we've been doing this, so what are we doing time check wise? We've only been at it for about probably six minutes and we have, let's do a quick count so I can see well, probably at least one, two, three, four, five, six, this would be seven coming out now. So let's back up to the edge of where that windrow is. Now the proof will be in the pudding as they say for how lucrative these silage bales are. I mean I guess the benefit of bales is you don't need a silage pit to prepare them and it's a relatively quick process obviously we've, we've planted the grass the grass is now here we've cut it we've windrowed it now we're baling it and wrapping it so there's two processes in one uh, the subsequent process of picking them up should be pretty straightforward so I'll just use like the Roland auto load bale trailer and away we go now I am leaving a little bit of grass behind so I'm not too worried about it, to be honest. As long as I get most of it, I won't lose any sleep. Jeez, we're filling up pretty quick. So we've got a decent yield out of this. Well, it's because the bales are so small. That's why. That's that's. Truth be told, that's the the real reason. And we got three, four over there, a couple over there. They do look pretty cool in the fields, I must say. Oh, hang on. I'll come back for that that load getting ahead of myself right, let's swing around and grab this run there is something satisfying about bailing in general in this game I, mean, I don't know what it is I think the fact that bales on a farm field is something that we you know associate with farming like when you think of farming that's that could be an image that comes to mind especially after harvest obviously that's when you do baling or off or off making pretty good time here so I think for the rest of this episode we will we're full again Let's have a quick look at the bale trailers. Yeah, one of these. So one of these mods potentially we will use to pick them up. Now the other thing that I, the reason why I don't normally do baling is because you can't hire a worker to do the baling for you. Now if you do, you get a bit of a contraption going with the you know, various mods and stuff. You can get workers to do it, but I mean, I'd just rather, I'd just rather do it in this case to get it done. It's not gonna be the end of the world. But if you're going for maximum efficiency, Basically the jobs that you have to do, obviously you've got to do them and then you can utilise workers for other tasks. 
So just to keep your uh, productivity high on the farm. All right, where we go. I mean, it'd be good if I didn't have to stop every 30 seconds or so, but that's that's how we that's how we'd got to do it. Well, how many runs we got left? I reckon we've probably got. Well, I reckon we've got maybe maybe four more bales. All right, see if we can pick up these straggly bits on the way through. Yeah, cool. I think we've got a run in the middle. I mean, realistically, this has not taken that long at all. Probably less than 10 minutes, really. Probably this will be our last one, I would say. All right, cool. Let's head on back to the main farm here. Get this one wrapped and unloaded. And then we'll go look at a bale trailer, see how many we've got. So we've got quite a few here. So the question is going to be whether we're going to sell them straight away. Or we're going to start stockpiling them. I mean, it all depends on the price of silage. Okay, cool. Let's turn off the bale. I'll to pick up off. Just park this guy here. All right, let's go and have a look at our bale trailers. So we want bale loaders. We want we want auto load because I don't want to be here all day. Uh, so this will take 180. So 125 centimeter round, which is what I think we've got. Okay, auto load. Yes. Standard design. Standard wheel design. Now just double check, we are 125 centimetre bales. Yep, okay, so we're 125 centimetre bales, so that trailer will take them. Uh, this guy here, 28 bales. Okay, auto load, yes. Design standard wheels. Okay, let's buy that. Alright, let's head over to the shop. So I will, I will meet you guys over there. Alright, here we are at the shop. Let's grab this trailer. So truth be told, we can use our T9 to tow this if it is going to get very heavy, because it will have, it's got a suitable drawbar on it. Okay, good to go. Now the reason why I prefer this one is because I've used it before and I'm familiar with the loading mechanics. Which, uh, if you haven't seen before, we'll have a look at that when the time comes. It's very long too. There we go, get a full view of it. Alright, let's go and pick up these bales actually. So it's nice to be actually doing some baling on our own field. We've been harvesting and doing contracts for so long. Everywhere else. Okay, one operating position. So what we should be able to do here is basically just drive up to these bales and they should yep, just magically jump on board. Now I think, I think from memory this may double stack. I don't think we're going to, yeah, we've got a row of 18, or whatever, 9 maybe? What are we up to? That's 7. And that is nice to have auto load of some description on console. Obviously PC have had auto load for forever. And us console peasants have to deal with doing this manually, normally. But thankfully for the modding community out there, Giving the console players some love with such mods as this. I don't know why giants just don't add auto load across the board. I mean, if modders can do it, I don't see why a large scale game publisher cannot institute auto load. All right, do we have to tie these down? I don't think we do. Uh, transport position. Uh, transport position. All right, we're looking good here. So we've got 21. So let's go and have a look at the price of silage. All right, the price of silage is 171 at the... Let's have a look at the price fluctuations. So 189 is the peak. So we are we're pretty good. So I'm just going to take these over and sell them. Just so we can make some money off of them. And let's just see what we get out of this load. Now I pray that we do not lose these. I mean, we sh they should be pretty sticky. And what I mean by that is not, not fall off, but it was always the first time. Alright, I'm going to drive over there. I'll see you guys over there shortly.
Alright, here we are coming up to the animal dealer. So I've just got to remember where the cell point is. I think it is just out the front here. So where this little loading, unloading area is. Oh, crash time. Okay, so how do we unload this? So let's go unload bales. So I think we just do this. And then unload bales here. That sells them. So 3,397. Hmm. That is a little bit underwhelming, if I'm honest. So what is out here? Just out of interest. Ah, the debris crusher. Okay. Good to know. Oops, sorry buddy. Don't mind me. Alright, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drive this guy back on a worker. Not in transport mode. Reset. Transporting position. Okay, is this going to work now? Okay, there we go. Just take out the giveaway sign. We didn't need that. At least it wasn't me driving. Anyway. Alright, let's go and check out our field. So we've got a little bit of grass left. That's fine. Yeah, I've got a significant bit of equipment now. Now what I want to do, what I do want to check is the price of wool. So what is the price of wool worth? So 1257 because basically the plant, what I'm thinking is if we're going to go with the sheep, if we're going to go with sheep, they can be 100% productive on grass. So we're going to have plenty of grass to feed them. Uh, if we do go, so let's have a look at animal pens. We can get a pretty reasonably priced we can go to the sheep barn and have 25 so that's only 51 grand but then that's going to basically max out our cash which i'm probably look to be honest i'm probably not too concerned eh? because i think what i'd rather have is a couple of income generators and when i say income generators income avenues to sort of supplement the solar panels and given the fact that wool is how much is the large so we do have a couple of different options we've got the large pen we've got this sheep barn and the sheep pasture. I'd probably go the sheep barn just for cost just for cost effectiveness and then obviously we don't need to worry about the watering so that might be a job for next episode so let's check in with our worker. Oh he's returned parking up on block of the road. All right let's get this parked up and turned off. All right um so a little bit of a recap obviously first grass harvest that'll grow back now we'll continue to harvest that get silage bales out of it with the remaining cash we've got from our $500,000 loan, we will probably get the sheep pasture. I mean the sheep, uh, what did I say, the sheep barn. So this this guy here, so we'll probably do that next episode. Uh, we will fill that with sheep, and then we'll start using the wool for to sell directly. And then I think once we can afford it, we will probably look to get into turning that into fabric, and then turning that into clothes. So clothes is obviously going to be the high ticket the high ticket item so 10 grand i think that's going to be the i think that's going to be the path we go down so utilizing a wool for fabric so that requires a spinnery and tailor shop which if we look at those buildings in uh productions i believe so the that's the carpentry so a spinnery for 60 grand so that'll take wool turn it into fabric and then the tailor shop for a hundred thousand We'll turn that into clothes. So it's going to be a fair investment to recoup that money. But I think that would be that would be our plan, sort of long term. I'm just checking if there's a cheaper spinnery. I think they're all the same price at the end of the day. All right, cool. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Really appreciate it. Any comments or feedback, leave them below. Consider sharing the video, liking the video as well. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, consider doing that as well. It really helps me out. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.